Yo, listen, man, you'll never be successful leading anybody else if you can't lead yourself. You ain't going to be able to lead your family. You ain't going to be able to lead a team. You ain't going to be able to lead in business. Nowhere, man. Leadership begins with you. And we're continuing our series on the five pillars of leadership uh, based on the book by Randy Slechta and Paul J. Myers. And this is part three of our multi-part series where we're going all the way in, man, and figuring out how in the heck we can close this leadership gap, man, because effective leadership is not just key in running the country. I know we got a big election coming up, but it's the key to success in every area of your life. So let's get into it. But you've got to overcome fear if you're going to win. You're tuned into the Cortez Hustle Show. Please like and subscribe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cortez Hustle Show afternoon edition. And if you're here for the first time, you don't know who I am. I am H. Cortez, also known as the one and only financial health mentor, everybody's favorite fatherpreneur from DauntedOnlineMarketing.com, where we're on a mission to empower working Americans economically through financial literacy with an emphasis on personal brand development and entrepreneurship. Do me a favor as you guys are hopping on, go ahead and comment in the chat where you're from. Also drop the name of your business and or your brand. Just don't share any links. You never know who might want to connect with you uh, based on what it is that you do, especially if you guys share the same geographical location. Uh, let's dive right in, man. Five pillars of leadership. What are they? Crystallized thinking. Number two, plans and balance. Number three is where we're going to be spending our day today. Passion and desire. Number four, confidence and trust. And number five, commitment and responsibility. So we talked about the power of crystallizing your thinking and we gave you seven questions, eight questions that you should be asking yourself to do that. If you missed parts one and part two, I will put a link to those in the comments here shortly. So you can go back and check those out. But always know that uh, this show streams on both the Financial Health Mentor page on Facebook, as well as the Financial Health Mentor channel on YouTube. So uh, today we're going to give you the seven hallmarks of passion and desire, but we're also then going to talk about the five steps to developing passion and desire. So let's get to these hallmarks, man. And um, I know time is not going to permit me to really go into how to ignite passion in others, especially if you're leading a team, you want to be able to ignite passion in those that you are leading as well. Uh, I might have to just save that for Monday. Uh, Lavelle Williams, uh, Williams Property Management is in the building uh, from Southfield, Michigan. Uh, good morning, afternoon, young man. Keep smiling. What's going on, Mr. Rich Greer? All right. So here we go. Here we go. Uh, what are some of the hallmarks of passion and desire? Right. Um, before we even get into those, let me just read you this. It says highly effective leaders know that talent creates its own opportunities. Desire and passion are in a very real sense. The catalysts. They're the catalysts and the developers of said talent. They combine to create their own opportunities and abilities. Effective leaders possess passion that can be transmitted to others, while desire can be learned and developed as a habit, a way of life, or a deliberate choice of a living philosophy. So what are these seven hallmarks of passion and desire? Number one, passion and desire are two qualities that combine to transform average executives and managers into highly effective leaders, energized to keep working when problems cause other leaders 
to give up in disgust. Ladies and gentlemen, I am fortunate enough to be sitting under the tutelage of some very, very effective leadership. And I get to witness this passion and desire almost every single day but a hallmark of passion and desire. It's one of the things that keeps leaders energized in the face of opposition. You should think about that. If you ain't got no passion that's burning in your belly, no serious desire to make things happen, when you run into challenges, then it's easy to throw your hands up. Number two, armed with passion and desire, highly effective leaders make commitments while others make half-hearted promises. Ooh, that is rich right there. That is why some people can commit while other people cannot because of their inner passions and desires allows them to commit with everything that they have. And that's important, guys. Very important. Number three, desire and passion equip highly effective leaders with the judgment and courage to say yes or no at the appropriate time. Those who lack desire and passion say maybe at the wrong times and for the wrong reasons. Do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not already smashed that share button, make sure you do that uh, on Facebook, especially. It's super easy to do on YouTube. Go ahead and hit that share button as well and share it to your favorite social media platforms. Maybe somebody is on your timeline and struggling in the area of leadership. Doesn't mean that they are uh, bad people. Uh, sometimes we don't get where we want to go in life because of a lack of attention to leading effectively. And that's why we're doing this series. Uh, I've seen my business grow. I've seen myself grow as I started to study effective leadership. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with my screen, so I apologize for those of you who are watching uh, and seeing that happen. That's kind of like psychedelic stuff going on there. All right, so let me just recap the first. Desire and passion are two qualities that combine to transform average executives and manager into highly effective leaders. On with desire and passion, it is what allows effective leaders to commit while others make half-hearted pro uh, promises. Desire and passion equip highly effective leaders with the judgment and courage to say yes and no at the appropriate times when others are saying maybe at the wrong time and for the wrong reasons. Number four, desire and passion allow highly effective leaders to say, I'm good, but not as good as I ought to be and will be. Leaders who lack desire and passion say, I ain't no worse than others, right? I want y'all to get this, man. Because when you don't have passion and desire, one of the first things that you do is find someone who is below average and compare yourself to them. Say things like, hey, at least I'm not struggling like so-and-so. At least I'm better off than that person. You gotta understand something, man. There's a lot of below average in the world today. And for you to compare yourself to someone is below average and think you're doing okay, that's just further proof that you lack effective leadership abilities. Number five, desire and passion and team members will bring respect for their leaders. Lack of desire and passion can only breed resentment. Yeah, I've, I've experienced that too, man. When people don't have things going on for themselves, they resent everything that you stand for and represent. This is why people can sit back behind the keyboard on social media and make negative comments on other people's posts. Do you realize what kind of condition you have to be in mentally 
to spend your time posting negative comments on people's posts, right? It's crazy. And it's because of stuff like that, that some people who have powerful messages to share with the world are afraid to come out and share those messages. So be careful about that, right? Number six, desire and passion instill in highly effective leaders a strong sense of personal responsibility for more than themselves. Those without desire and passion typically ask, what's in it for me? Right? See, I've got a big vision, man. And it's it's about so much more than me. I told you, I'll share, you, share with you guys this story. I heard ben, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk talk about this. And it really, ever since then, I've been very deliberate in the content that I create and the messages that I put out. He talked about, you know, coming over to this country as an immigrant from Russia. And he often wondered what it would be like if he could go back and listen to and see and hear the thoughts of his grandparents. Right. Well, guess what? This content that I'm creating on these platforms, I'm not just talking to me. Right. I'm also talking to my sons and their unborn children and the unborn great grandchildren and so on and so forth. Right. We get to with these mediums create opportunities to share our thoughts, not only with the world today, but also the world tomorrow. And the world next year. In the world five years ago, uh, five years from now, and 10 years from now. And that to me is empowering. That to me is exciting that my children and my grandchildren and my great grandchildren will never have to wonder about what I thought. They will never have to wonder about what I'm passionate about, what drives me why I'm so excited about entrepreneurship. They'll never have to wonder about me building the legacy that I'm building for them. They'll be able to go back and hear from the horse's mouth, right? Pun intended, because when I was young, they used to call me horse mouth because my teeth are so big, right? Nevertheless, number seven, desire and passion are qualities to be highly prized by anyone who will become a highly effective leader. Desire and passion make success easier to attain and enhance the excitement of moving along the journey towards its achievement. Passion and desire makes the journey more pleasant. Right? And where the journey is pleasant, it's easier to stay on the path. Where the journey is pleasant, it's easier to stay on the path. And you guys know this. It's not about the destination as much as it's about the journey. And if you want your journey to success to be easier, to be more pleasant, then you better develop some passion and desire in your gut, man. Because that's the key. Really quickly. Now, we're going to move and transition to the five steps to developing passion and desire. But before I do that, real quick, for those of you who do not know, I have a book called Monetize My Life, Four Incredibly Simple Ways to Turn Your Passions into Profit. And um, due to popular demand, a lot of people have been asking me, Cortez, can you help me with monetizing my life. I watch your videos and I understand that, but can you really, I got the book, can you help me? And the answer is a resounding yes. So next Thursday, November 5th, I'm putting together a master class, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, a master class where I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I've been able to use in my life to turn my gift, my passions, my experience and expertise in 
to a profitable online business. If you guys are interested in that, and I don't know if this is a StreamYard thing or if this is a my computer thing, um, but yeah, it's it's really going crazy on me. Um, but if you guys would be interested in attending a master class, especially if you are a uh, coach, if you are a, a someone who already has a book, if you have someone has, if you're someone who has a book in you that you need to get out, you want to do workshops and things of that nature. If you have a gift, talent, special ability that you want to turn into a profitable online business, I need you to comment master class so that I can get you the link later today so that you can register for that. Again, that's next Thursday, November 5th um, at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to go for about 90 minutes. And when you leave that master class, you will have uh, identified your gift or talent. You will have a idea of the product and service that you're going to push. You will understand how to package and present that to the marketplace. You will understand how to leverage these social media platforms and this free marketing. All of that we're going over in this masterclass. So if that sounds like something you want to be a part of, make sure you comment masterclass so that I can get you the registration link here when we're done. Now, let's go over the five steps to developing desire and passion. Number one, you got to strive to know yourself. Examine your inner being. Get to know yourself, your abilities, your potential, and your needs. Know what excites and energizes you. Know what motivates you to take action. Crystallize your thinking and your objectives and clarify your own personal sense of value so that you know exactly what you believe about yourself, about your life in general, and about other people. Knowledge of self is so critically important. Number two, make sure that the goals you set, the targets you pursue, and the rewards you desire are personally meaningful to you. Guys, yeah, sometimes because of the way our media cycle is run and the motives a lot of times behind these media cycles, a lot of the times we don't even have our own original thoughts. We think we desire something. And if you're not doing this inner work, then you'll come to chase things that you only find out when you receive them that you only desire them because that's what the TV said that you should have, right? There's a lot of uh, traditionalism going on and really being pushed hard through propaganda when we are so unique that what's right for the next person ain't necessarily right for me. And if you're not careful, your desires and the things that, that you think you want will actually turn out to be things that were implanted in you by other people. So you got to do that in a work and you got to define for yourself exactly what success means as a leader. You got to define for yourself what does you leading your family mean, right? None of this stuff that I'm going over here in this book is a direct template, right? These are generalities, but you based on the inner work that you're doing, have to come up with what your definition of effective leadership means to you. Number three, work to find wisdom and knowledge in those who are in a position to advise you. Respect their insight, their special expertise, and their superior years of experience. Mentorship, man. I wouldn't even be on this leadership journey if it wasn't for some great mentorship. Right? Seek out mentorship. The Bible puts it this way. There is, um, there is wisdom in the multitude of counselors. Right? Are you seeking mentorship? 
Have you given someone permission to tell it to you exactly how they see it about what you're doing and how you're doing it? Not to be mean, not to be rape or to belittle, but to benefit you. Right? Seek that out. People in your life who's already been where you want to go or they are currently where you want to go and ask them, what is some of the best paths that you could use to get there? Good afternoon, Facebook user. Looks like you might be jumping in from my group. So say your name because the group doesn't give me your name when you're coming in. So make sure you find wisdom and knowledge in those who are in position to advise you, right? Make sure they got the results that you want. And if they got the results that you want, then study them. If they're from afar, if they're in your life, then see if you can get in their presence, right? And watch this. Sometimes it means you have to spend some money with them. Sometimes it means you have to spend some money with somebody else to get next to them, right? You might have to buy a book. Of course, you might have to go attend a workshop where they're going to be speaking on stage and see if you can corner them backstage or in the hallway and get some time with them. Right. How bad do you want it is the question. Number four. Dream. If you're going to develop passion and desire. Visualize your success. Nothing increases desire and passion for achievement like controlled and directed visualization. Something unique and amazing happens when you practice looking into the future to see yourself in possession of your goals. You become so excited, so motivated, so passionate and desirous to reach them that nothing can deter you or draw you off course. Do you see yourself in possession of that thing that you want? Can you smell the interior of the car? Can you see yourself hanging your family pictures in the big house that you desire? Can you see yourself uh, on the cover of Forbes magazine as one of the fastest growing companies? in the country, in the world? Can you see an expose being done on you by 60 Minutes? And I don't know who's on 60 Minutes. Is it still Ted Brokaw or somebody, right? Can you see yourself sitting down with Oprah Winfrey? And she wants to know the innermost workings of your success and how you got there. Right. Can you see that? Can you see it as clear as I can see myself sitting at the top of my skyscraper? And at present, this skyscraper is the tallest in the city. But there's one just across the street being built that's projected to be three floors taller than mine. Right. And I'm sitting in my corner office, windows all around, I can look out one side and I can see the arch. And on the other side, I can see the steel workers framing up this huge building that's gonna be bigger than mine. And my building is gonna be in the shadow of this other building, right? And as I'm preparing myself for the reality that, hey, I am no longer the big dog on campus. I'm not upset. I'm actually happy. I'm elated, right? You know why I'm so happy and elated? Because the owner of this new skyscraper that's going up is going to be three stories taller than mine, happened to be one of my sons, right? And when I sit down and I have a conversation with him, son, you know I built this empire for you guys to take over. And he looks me dead in my face and says, you know, Pop, I appreciate that. But the only way 
for me to get out from under your shadow is to put you in mine, right? Can you see your visions? Can you see your dreams? Can you see those things that you are in full pursuit of? Can you see them as vividly, right? Tell you guys all the time, man, the Cortez Springer of 2025, y'all gonna love that dude, man. I sit down and I have a cup of tea with him on a regular basis. Y'all gonna love him. Can you see yourself in the future? So much so that you can borrow from that experience and implement certain things today that will guarantee that you're gonna get there. Can you see it, right? Gotta visualize it. Number five. Be willing to work harder than you've ever worked before. Work efficiently, work long hours, work willingly. No goal exerts enough power to produce desire and passion unless you are willing to invest much of your time and effort in bringing it to fruition. You want to improve or develop passion and desire? Put one foot in front of the other towards the assertion of your goal and see if that don't fire you up every day. Right? If you want to develop your passion, see what happens when every day you put one foot in front of the other towards the worthwhile pursuit of that vision that you have for yourself. Man, that nothing fires me up like those little micro accomplishments that I'm making every single day towards my dream and goals. That's what fuels passion, man. The work towards that worthwhile goal is going to feed your passion. It's going to Fuel your desires. Figuring things out when I run my face dead smack into a wall. There's nothing like, nothing that feeds my desire like trying to figure out how to overcome this obstacle and doing the work. Both the inner work on me and the external work of the action steps towards pursuing my game plan. Ladies and gentlemen, you will never succeed at anything until you first learn how to lead. And the mm -hmm. first person you learn how to lead is you. So with that, Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Listen, make sure that you click on the video on this card and check out the other videos in this series as well as the rest of the videos on the channel. Check out the playlist on Facebook as well as YouTube. Guys, all I want to do is see you win. And sometimes I know that all that it takes to get you to the next level is the right word in season. Right, when I was doing my Bible study this morning, I read across a verse. It says the right word in season, man, can begin the transformation that changes everything. So till I talk to you guys next time, I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every single one of you. Now hustle up. But you've got to overcome 